Previously I explained the new tyre rules for 2016, and a few people have asked for a new video for 2018, what with the new compounds and such. So let's do a quick run through of that now. Not much has changed, so this should be a happy refresher. Since 2016 when Pirelli introduced the purple ultra soft tyre and started bringing three compounds to a race instead of two, we've had 2017. The rules were the same, but the tyres were different. Wider than they've been for a long time, Pirelli decided to play it safe and constructed their rubber with stable compounds that didn't degrade readily, and this led to a lot and a lot of races with only one set of pit stops. A lot of people thought that took some of the fun out of the races. For 2018, Pirelli are now widening their range of compounds further. From 2011 to 2014, we had four dry compounds, the hard, the medium, the soft, and the super soft. Let's stop and give a quick definition here. A compound describes the type of rubber that the tyre is made of. Different compounds are made in slightly different ways. The softer the compound, the grippier, and therefore faster it will be, but it will degrade much faster and have a shorter lifespan. In 2016, Pirelli brought in the ultra soft tyre. Now, for 2018, Pirelli have brought in a hyper soft tyre and a super hard tyre bringing the total number of compounds up to seven. Some people have said this is just Pirelli trying to bring the focus back to them after people stopped talking about tyres in 2017, but Pirelli's actual reason makes much more sense, in theory. Having more compounds to choose from means Pirelli can better select the right tyres for different tracks. Their aim is to try and have as many races as possible have a two-stop strategy be the most frequent approach, as they believe this will make for more exciting interesting races without having the tyres wearing out being the dominant focus of the race. Look out for a future video in which I'll explain how Pirelli choose which compounds to bring to which tracks. One thing worth noting here is that a 2015 super soft tyre is not the same as a 2016 super soft tyre, and this is not the same as a 2017 super soft tyre, etc. Between the years, Pirelli make adjustments to the compounds, or sometimes completely relabel them depending on what they've learned and on what feedback they're given about what direction tyres should go in. For example, for 2018, Pirelli are making all of their tyres a step softer. This means that, roughly speaking, the 2018 soft tyre will be as soft as the 2017 super soft, and so on for all the other compounds. This means the new Hypersoft will be two steps softer than the softest compound available last year. Is the word soft losing all meaning for anyone yet? The labels super soft, medium, hard, etc. are just markers for the different grades of compound, even though they may vary from year to year. The whole range of tyres may be made softer, harder, or even more spaced out. There are also, of course, two wet weather compounds. The intermediate for changeable and reasonable wet weather, and the full wet or extreme tyre for heavy rain. Go see my video on wet weather tyres for more info on these. The rules then. Let's remind ourselves of the rules regarding how tyres are chosen, distributed and used on any given race weekend. Before the event, and I mean way before the event, Pirelli choose three compounds that they'll bring to a race. For example, the soft, medium and hard compounds might be used at the British Grand Prix. Each driver will have 13 sets of tyres to use during the weekend. A set is the four tyres a car needs. In these 13 sets of tyres, Pirelli will choose two sets of tyres that must be available for use in the race. Each driver must use at least one of those sets during the race. They might be the same compound, they might be different compounds. Pirelli will also choose one set of tyres that will be left available for Q3 if a driver makes it into the third part of qualifying. The remaining 10 can be chosen by the driver and team for each car. And it's interesting to see which drivers choose which selection of tyres. As you're probably aware, there are seven sessions in an F1 weekend. Three free practice sessions, three qualifying sessions, and a race. Out of the ten sets of self-chosen tyres, the drivers can use whichever they want, whenever they want. But they have to start giving back sets of tyres at certain points during the weekend, meaning they can't use them again. The reason for this is to make sure teams take to the tracks throughout the whole weekend and don't sit in the garage saving tyres for the first couple of practice sessions. Tyres have to be handed back at the following points. You have to give one set back 40 minutes into the first practice session, one set back at the end of that session. 
you give two sets back at the end of free practice two and two sets at the end of free practice three. Drivers can hand back whichever tyres they want, but obviously they'll start handing back the ones they've used the most. This leaves four sets available for qualifying, plus the bonus Q3 set if you make it to Q3. If you do use that, you have to hand that back after Q3 as well. If you make it into Q3, you must start the race on the tyre in which you set your fastest time in Q2. Everyone else can use whichever tyre they want to start the race on, including the special Q3 tyre, which now becomes unlocked for everyone else. So now in the race, everyone has to use at least one of the Pirelli nominated sets at one point in the race. The only time these rules can be bent is in the event of rain. If the race is declared wet at any point, then the drivers don't have to use any of their mandatory sets. If the race starts on a wet track, then the top 10 drivers don't have to use their Q3 tyres, as they'll obviously be starting on wet tyres. Similarly, if it's raining during Q2, then drivers can use whatever tyres they want to start the race on. And one final thing to mention, tyres always come in a set of four. You cannot mix up the sets, even if they're the same compound. If you do accidentally fit a mixed set, you must come back into the pits within three laps to put a proper set back on. What's going to be interesting is whether all seven of the dry compounds are really necessary. The hard compound was hardly used at all in 2017, being brought only to one race. And the softest compounds overwhelmingly played the most part. I'll be keeping an eye on which compounds get used in 2018. I also have a feeling there might be too many colours to keep track of now. We've got a lot of compounds, but still only pick three per race. So my idea is, whichever three are picked, why not just colour them in the soft, medium and hard colours? It's not that important to know at any given moment whether the softest tyre at a race is the soft, the super soft or the hyper soft. You just need to know that it's the softest. That's just my thought. I have no idea why Pirelli wouldn't want to do that. Thanks for watching. Um, another video about tyres, I know they're very popular and I know that was a rehash of some of the things I did two years ago, but it's good to have everything in one place. What do you think about the multitude of tyre compounds we've got now? Do you like them or are you a bit tired and want them to go away? Let me know. The next video should be on the slightly revised engine rules regarding how many components each car is allowed to have and how that's all going to shake out. Probably quite badly, I think. Stay tuned. Thanks again to all the people who have sponsored me. These are their lovely names here. If you'd like to sponsor me on Patreon, click on the little Patreon link, which should be appearing now. Um, every little bit helps keep this swimming along nicely and means there aren't any big gaps between videos. I think we're doing all right at the moment. You know, after taking a year off, I think we're, we're coming along well. So thanks for sticking with me.